Hello, calculus learners. This video is about integration by parts, which is one of the uh, foundational techniques of integration that you learn in Calc 2. So first we'll start with a quick overview of integration by parts, and then we will go into an example. All right, so integration by parts undoes the product rule. So just like U substitution undoes the chain rule, integration by parts undoes the product rule. So pretend that we have two functions of x, we have u of x and we have v of x. If we take the derivative of the product, then we know that we need to use the product rule. So we would take uh, u of x times the derivative of v of x, and then we would add on the derivative of u of x times v of x. Now we know that we can um, rearrange this, so we're just going to solve for u of x times v prime of x. So in other words, we are subtracting the second quantity to the other side here. In doing so, we end up with this equation right here. And now we know that we can integrate both sides and the equality will hold. So if we integrate both sides with respect to x, then we get the integral of u of x v prime of x dx is equal to u of x v of x times the integral of u prime of x v of x dx. So this is essentially what the integration by parts technique is doing. We are starting off with some integral that fits this form here. And we identify our u of x and we identify our v prime of x. Then we can find plain old v of x and we can find u prime of x. And then we can write this equality here. So we're going to rewrite from this usually hard to solve integral. We rewrite that into the product of u and v minus the integral of u prime times v of x. And lots of times you'll see this written as just the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. All right, so let's um, look at a couple of examples here. First example, we have the integral of x times the natural log of x. So if we look at our starting place here, we want to use this formula here. So we are starting with the integral on the left hand side. What we need to do is fi figure out what is u and what is dv. Now we have two options here because we can see we have x and we have natural log of x. So if we aren't sure which one to use for u and which one to use for dv, then we could just guess and see if it works. Um, what we're going to use for u is the natural log of x. So if we think about our two options here, x and natural log of x, we need to figure out which one to make u. u is the one we take a derivative of. We know how to take the derivative of x, and we know how to take the derivative of the natural log of x. But if we think about dv, we need to be able to integrate dv. Do you know how to integrate natural log of x? Um, we would not be able to actually really do that without uh, integration by parts, unless we use the Taylor polynomial. So we are going to make natural log of x into our dv, and therefore we'll make x our u. So we have natural log of x is u. The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x dx. So that means that x times dx is dv. So this and this gives us dv. Now we need to integrate that in order to find plain old v. And we know that the antiderivative of x is 1 half x squared. So now we have nicely organized our u, du, v, and dv. And so we can now plug all of this in to our skeleton equation here. So we have u and v, we have v and du, we go ahead and plug those in. So u we said is natural log of x, 
v is one half x squared. Now we write down minus the integral of v du. v we said is one half x squared. du is one over x dx. <clears throat> so then we can now cancel out some of these x's because we have an x squared here and we have a one over x there. So x squared over x just leaves us x. And then here I've pulled the constant in front of the integral just to clean things up a bit. Now we can go ahead and integrate x dx. Nice and easy. That gives us 1 half x squared plus our constant. Therefore, our final answer here is 1 half natural log of x times x squared minus x squared divided by 4 plus our constant. So that is how we can work on this integral of x times the natural log of x dx. Okay, next example that we look at, we have arc sine of x. Now in this case, we don't have, I mean, we do have a product. The product is just, if we want to think about putting a one in there, now we have a product. So if we think about arc sine, we do not know how to integrate arc sine, but we knew we do know how to take its derivative. In particular, its derivative is equal to one over the square root of one minus x squared. So since we know how to find the derivative of arc sine, we're going to make that our u. Then that leaves just dx to be our dv. Okay, so let's set up our area with all of the u du v dv. We said u is arc sine of x. And now we take the derivative to see that du is one over the square root of one minus x squared dx. Now looking at dv, dv is just dx. Integrate that, we get v equals x. So now we can use this info in here and write out the integral of arc sine of x dx. So I always like to start by writing the this equation here. The integral of arc sine of x dx is equal to uv minus the integral v du. Now we're going to go ahead and plug everything in. So we said that u is equal to arc sine, v is equal to x, v here again is x, and then we plug in du, which is uh, the square root of 1 over 1 minus x squared. Okay, so go ahead, plug all that in. This first expression here, we don't need to do anything with it. It looks maybe not like the most pretty thing in the world, but we can just leave it like it is. And then now we're going to work on this integral of x over 1 minus x squared dx. In order to solve this integral, we need to use u substitution. And in particular, we're going to set u equal to the stuff inside of the square root. So u is equal to 1 minus x squared. Then that means that du is equal to negative 2x dx. And uh, x dx then is negative 1 half du. Okay, so we're going to leave the arc sine of x dx the same, and we're just focusing on this integral here for now. All right, so we can go ahead and swap out the 1 minus x squared. We can swap that out for u. So now we have the square root of u in the denominator, and then we replace the x dx with negative 1 half du. So negative times a negative one half, and we get a positive one half. So now we're looking at the integral of one over the square root of u du. And I always like to rewrite that as the integral of u to the negative one half du. Now we can go ahead and do that integration because it's pretty straightforward. 
Um, when we do our integration, then we have the antiderivative of u to the negative one half is two times u to the one half plus our constant. So this here is our answer to the integral of arc sine of x dx. But we're actually not quite there yet. We need to bring everything back to in terms of our original variable x. And right now we still have a u in here. So what we need to do is sub back in using u equals one minus x squared. So instead of u, we have one minus x squared. So we can say in the end, the integral of arc sine of x dx is equal to x times arc sine of x minus the square root of one minus x squared plus our constant. That is it for this video. I'll probably do a couple more examples in another video then.